Welcome back. In my last video I showed you how to get awesome photos using your DJI Mini 2. If you haven't watched this video I'll put a link up here. Definitely watch it. It gives you some great tips and some handy ideas on how to get some great photos with your DJI Mini 2. Photos that you couldn't get with a digital SLR or a mirrorless camera. And in today's video I'm going to show you how I edited two of these photos. This one here of the bridge and this one here of the mangrove to make them awesome, to give them that wow factor. Because it's great taking photos with your Mini 2 in JPEG, but the power lies in the raw file because a raw file has got so much more data that you can really push it to the limits. It's like clay, unmolded clay. You mold it how you like it. And that's what I love about editing raw files. And I use a program called Adobe Lightroom Classic. It costs around $15 on a subscription base per month. Three cups of coffee, that's all it costs a month. Not only do you get Adobe Lightroom Classic, you get Adobe Photoshop, plus you get Adobe Lightroom, the cloud-based. So you can put it on your tablet. If you're out on holidays, you can download a couple of photos, touch them up, share them to social media. It's a great set of programs to have. Let's dive in and I'll show you how I edited these photos. So these are our two images we're going to get. And you can see they're much different to what you just saw on the screen. Now we go into the develop mode and here the first thing is on the left here, on the left panel here, you can see I've got user presets. And if you aren't familiar with what a preset is, it's exactly that. It's a preset. It's your starting point. Sure, you can go over here on the develop panel and start from scratch all the time. But if you're taking a lot of photos, it's good to have a preset. I have a preset for wildlife image. I have a preset for astro, presets for landscapes and a preset for my drone. Now this is a, not a one click wonder, but it brings my image to a certain point. Maybe the image is slightly overexposed or dark underexposed, but it gives me a starting point. So I'm not starting from scratch all the time. If you're not familiar with presets, I'll put a link up here and I explain how to use presets, how to create a preset and where you can download a preset for wildlife photos and a preset for landscape photos. So if you're not familiar, check out this link. So we can see here, I've got a preset called Charles Drone. Click on it. Look at that. It's already brought it up and I'll hide this panel here now. But look at this. If I go YY. So YY means we're looking at what we've already done and what the raw file looked like straight into Lightroom. And look, we can already see we've already enhanced our image. But to give you an idea of how to start from scratch, you can see I've got so many panels here that have already been done. We'll go back to the start. We won't use a preset, but I want to show you what the preset could do. So now we're starting from scratch. Nothing's been done. You can see everything is all in the zeros. The first thing I do here is the profile, Adobe Color. I want landscape. It's a landscape image. What this does is it gives you a bit more vibrance, a bit more contrast in your color profile. Then I look at the exposure of the image. I'll just darken it up just that little bit. This looks quite good here. Now I'll bring the highlights down and the blacks. If I hold the Alt key, I'm using a PC, Windows PC. I hold it down and what I want is I don't want to see any markings or we can see here on this screen we've got yellows blacks and all that i don't want any of that bring it down here that looks good now i'll bring up our shadows a little bit now here the next one here we have presence we have texture we'll give a bit of texture a bit of clarity what this does is really gives a demarcation line between everything you see on this image here we'll add a bit of dehaze what dehaze does is actually like a haze filter so if we slide negative in the dehaze. It looks foggy and if you're sliding to the right it just cuts out any of the pollution any of that so it just makes your image very sharp. If you're photographing in a very hazy environment let's say sunrise in Thailand there's a lot of haze around you could use the dehaze slider and it gets rid of that. Now we'll add some vibrance we'll add some saturation wow look at that this looks very nice already we'll increase our white balance here this looks really nice already, but look, this here, we've actually got the brown here of the river. I wanted to make it more brown. So I come up here to the mask tool and I want color range. I'm going to click on color range here. And look, you can see it's showing me everything in red here is going to be adjusted. I don't want everything. I'm going to bring it down a little bit there. Now 
I'm going to use a slider and I'm going to make it more brown. But if I say show overlay, we can see all this here. I don't want this. I don't want this at all. So I come up to subtract, I click the brush, and now all I'm using the brush is to erase all this extra here. So there we go, make the brush much bigger. Beautiful. Why am I doing this? Because I don't want extra saturation in this area. Untick show overlay. And if you can see on the far left here, can you see that the water doesn't look the same color? That's because the sun was shining there. So we'll use a grad filter. And a grad filter is used just to darken or lighten an area. So we go create new mask. We want linear gradient and we come up here and we grade it like that there. Now I can just reduce the exposure a little bit, not too much. Bring the highlights down. Now I can see where it is. I'm just going to bring it back a little bit here and I'm going to adjust the color there. That looks a bit better. Now let's make these trees here more green. Again, we click color range. We click on the tree. Look at that. It's just selected all the green areas. So we come up to the tent and let's push the greens. Look at that. So good. Now, last one, color range. We want to turn this bitumen, unsaturate the bitumen. So it's really sort of desaturated and it looks very gray. So we click on it and we refine the selection there. Now I come down here to saturation and I desaturate it. Look at that. Now we've got very good contrast. We've got the brown river, we've got the green trees, and we've got this gray here in the car park. We have got a great image. And if we go down here to YY, just five minutes ago, that's what we started with on the left. And we've ended up with this. This is the power of raw. This is how good Adobe Lightroom is. Now I've been editing photos for a long time, so it might take you more than a few minutes, but once you get the hang of it, I have got quite a few tutorials on using Adobe Lightroom on my YouTube channel. So check them out if you're not familiar with using Adobe Lightroom to edit your photos, or if you're thinking about using this program, you have a 30 day free trial that you can use Lightroom for free. So make use of seeing how good this program is. So now let's take a look at our second image here, the mangrove tree. Look at it. It's very flat. Couple of clicks and away we go. First, we want the Adobe Landscape Profile. We'll warm the image up just a little bit. We'll reduce the exposure a little bit like that. Beautiful. Now, let's reduce our highlights. Reduce the blacks a little bit. Give us a bit more shadows. We increase the shadows just so we can see a little bit more. That looks pretty good. Like the last one, we'll give it a bit of texture, a bit of clarity, a little bit of dehaze, some vibrance saturation. Now vibrance and saturation go hand in hand. Vibrance is really your primary colors, red, greens and blues. When we're using the vibrance slider, we're enhancing. We're making these colors more saturated, more vibrant. Saturation is across all the colors, all the shades. This looks pretty good, but I want the tree here to be a bit greener. So we come down here to color range again. We select the tree. I can see here that a lot more has been selected so I'm just going to reduce it down because I just want the tree and these tr other trees here in the background. Now I'm going to make them a bit more green. Beautiful, look at that. Now let's add some wow factor to these sandbanks here. Again, we just click color range. We click on them. And you can see I've got a bit of the sky, a bit of the background here. We'll just reduce that a bit. There, that looks much better. Look at that. Now we've got the effect. Remember, this is just after sunrise, so the sun's coming down, it's hitting, it's hitting these sandbanks. We want these sandbanks to have that golden color. This makes it look so nice. Everything looks good here, but this water here, see the water over here, the river. I know the river's brown, but do we want it brown? No, I want it to show like it's pristine, like here, a bit of blue. So we click new profile, color rain. There, I'm going to do it again. I'm just going to limit. Refine means I'm just refining. I'm just sliding it down until I've just selected the area that I want like that. Now I know I've got a bit of the sky but I'll show you how to get rid of that soon. Now we can see we've blued the sky up a little bit but that's all right. That looks pretty good. I quite like that. We'll leave it like that. What we'll do is we'll add another color mask here in this area here. I'll refine the gain there. Make this area a little bit bluer. Now we've got a bit of gold behind this tree here. Let's add some gold in there. So we've got create color mask there. 
Now we're going to refine it quite a lot here. I just want this area here. Now this area, I'm going to turn it to gold. Look at that. It's just enhancing that part. This looks so good. And that's about it. That's all I want. If I want to, I could lighten up here. But remember, early morning, so there's going to be a few shadows around. This looks so good. We click Done. And let's see why, why. What we started with on the left and what we've got on the right. Look at that. It is such a nice image and took us less than five minutes. This is the power of RAW, of DNG format. So much better than a JPEG file. And look how much detail I was able to pull out from a very flat image. Remember, a RAW file is just like clay. You're the potter, you're the editor. You're molding that clay into what you want, into that beautiful vase. And here, I've stopped because I say, that's enough. I don't need to go any further. I like editing to make it look realistic. And this is what it should look like. It's a realistic image. I hope this tutorial has given you some ideas and shown some quick tips on how to get the most of your RAW files in Adobe Lightroom to turn an already great image into something so much better. But remember, you can't make something great from something that's not good at the start. If your photo, if the composition isn't good, no amount of editing is going to change that. This is why I tell people when you go out, take quite a few photos and then you select your best photos to edit. On this morning, I think I took about half a dozen photos of this mango tree and I only kept two, one from this angle and one in the other video top down. And that's all I needed, just two photos out of my half a dozen photos to get what I wanted to highlight this area. So you can see by using Adobe Lightroom, we've turned a already good photo into something great, even more great, into an awesome shot by using the power, one of RAW file and two of Adobe Lightroom to give you an outstanding image and an image that most people would find hard believing that it came from your Mini 2. If the video has been of value to you, give it a big thumbs up, stay safe, enjoy using your Mini 2 to take awesome photos, and I'll see you next time.